Hi and welcome. This is my June review for Capricorn Sunshine and Capricorn Rising. We start the month with a look at the Black Moon Lilith because she's recently moved uh, sign and house and she's very much featured with a lot of aspects uh, during this month. Now, she's now in Cancer which uh, produces a fear of abandonment. So we all need to work on our uh, uh, independence so that we're not dependent on others for our needs. And then in the seventh house there's a shadow cast on partnerships. This includes all relationships. So this is a time when your relationships will need to be analysed and you need to see whether they are giving you what you need or what you're giving uh, the other person what they need. And if not, then it needs to change. Otherwise, the relationship will eventually have to uh, finish. Now, the thing is with the uh, Black Moons, you'll be going through these areas for a year, so you have plenty of time to work with this. Now there'll be other aspects coming up in a month which we'll talk about but on the 1st of June we have a square from Mars and this will bring up maybe frustrations or deep rooted issues that are buried deep below um, and you need to address these straight away. They will cause frustrations and irritations. Uh, but there's a good news as well because there's a positive aspect from Venus which will allow you to realign yourself with the uh, energies and to uh, push ahead in the direction that you need to go. Mercury turn and station and going direct and this is good news uh, because it's been retrograde for the last three weeks so there may have been hold ups and delays in things uh, it's been in your fifth house so uh, your social plans may not have worked out new projects may not have come through the pipeline quite right and uh, there may have been um, hold ups and uh, issues in, of all sorts now that the uh, planet's going direct it's a good time to harness the energy again uh, use the uh, square of Saturn to do planning and to reorganise things, breathe new life into these projects that were shelved. And also uh, just be a little bit careful because there is a sextile to uh, Neptune which can bring um, some illusion um, and so there may be uh, the need for to look at things in cold heart of day before proceeding. Then on the 4th we have uh, Saturn going uh, retrograde, so he's stationed retrograde in the second house. Now this is a time when you can work with Saturn while it's retrograde and the concentration will be on finances. It's uh, looking at uh, how much effort you put in to create your finances and do you need to put more effort in to be more successful, to, to gain more uh, material security. Also it's a good time to develop a proper and uh, honourable valuable system. On the 4th we have a conjunction between uh, Pallas Athena, the uh, asteroid, and uh, Uranus. This is happening in your 5th house, the house of uh, sociable uh, engagements. And uh, these two often have a dramatic uh, effect on social activities when they come together. There could be a lot of changes going on, so this could affect you uh, quite uh, acutely there. Especially if you have planets at 16 degrees of Taurus. Uh, this is where it's going to happen, or Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius. If any of these are areas in your chart, then you're going to be uh, personally involved in these changes that are going on. Now, um, also uh, on the fifth, there is a, a very positive aspect between uh, the Sun and Chiron. A Chiron is in your fourth house, so this is the home. So the, this could bring up some issues regarding uh, the past, where you need to heal the past, or the or the home and family area. This is all positive because you can use these experiences to motivate yourself, motivate yourself going forward in the future. And this aspect is very good for training to be a healer um, or to uh, become artistic and creative in, uh, in, uh, in the home area in particular. On the 9th is a day for a self-discovery. It's a good day to look within as Mercury makes a positive aspect to Pluto in your first house. So look deep within and see if you can discover something about yourself that you didn't really understand or know before. And on the 11th is a great day for having fun and excitement. Um, Venus comes together with Uranus in that fifth house we've just been talking about and uh, this is really good. If you're not in a relationship this could be the start of a new one. Someone could turn up in your life unexpected and uh, fireworks could uh, start. But if you're in a relationship, it's a good time to inject some excitement into that relationship. Maybe do something that's a little bit new, different or exciting. On 
the 14th we have our full moon. Now the full moon is in uh, Sagittarius but it's in your 12th house so this isn't um, a full moon where you want to be out socialising and having fun like you were earlier in the, uh, the month. This is a full moon for uh, quiet reflection. You may want to be alone, you may want to mull things over and think about things. Um, now in Sagittarius it's a very um, spiritual full moon and it may be that you want to gain um, some insights or maybe do some meditation to to see where you are at this moment. It's about looking at where you are, um, seeing how far you've come over the last year and preparing ready for the uh, full moon in your sign of Capricorn um, next month. Now there's also uh, another aspect, this is between uh, Mars and Chiron happening on the same day. Um, this again is in your fourth house, so this relates back to the, the healing that can be done within the home environment. And also you can use this with Mars to motivate yourself to uh, start something, uh, maybe a project or something around the home that will help to make the home a better and a more spiritual place. On the 15th we have uh, an aspect between the Sun and uh, Saturn. Saturn is retrograde in that second house uh, concerning finances so at this point it's just carry on doing what you're doing. Um, you can't run before you walk, just slow progress, steady progress, persistence, that's what we need. Then on the 16th there's a bit more excitement coming along because we have a triple conjunction between um, Venus, uh, Pallas and the Moon's North Node. Now this is a time when uh, uh, it's very karmically connected. Uh, there could be something or somebody, some event that happens that uh, leads you on the right track, sends you down the right path so you can realign yourself with what's what. But certainly um, there's going to be a strong influence coming along here. Uh, you need to just tune into it and make the most of it um, and go with the flow so to speak. On the 18th we have Venus making a square to Saturn in the house of finances so it's a good day to look at your finances, see whereabouts you are um, and have a real good critical eye um, on them. Uh, just be wary because Neptune's also making an aspect to a Venus so you don't want to be looking at them through rose coloured spectacles. Then on the uh, 19th we have Jupiter making an aspect to the Black Moon Lilith. Now Jupiter's in that fourth house uh, and is feeling a little bit rebellious in that area wants to maybe break away from the past family traditions and, and do something a little bit different. But it's also a good day to, to look at and work on relationships. We spoke about the Black Moon earlier on in the video and it's a good time now with confidence uh, of Jupiter in this position to, uh, to start to make some changes. The other aspect is uh, from Jupiter to Mercury. So this is good for planning. This is good for putting things into uh, perspective and uh, putting them into action. On the 21st we have the summer solstice. This is the day when the sun is highest in the sky and marks the first day of summer and also the first day that the sun moves into uh, Cancer. Uh, Venus makes an aspect on this day. It's a positive aspect to Pluto so there's a lot of intense emotion and desire around. And on the 23rd she moves into uh, Gemini, into your sixth house. So we will be more concerned with your everyday uh, environment. On the 27th we have Mars making an aspect to uh, Saturn as the Sun did uh, a few days ago and again it's more of the same, it's not a high energy um, aspect and Saturn is retrograde so just keep doing what you're doing at the, at the moment. There's also uh, an aspect between uh, Mercury and uh, Chiron so there could be a key, a clue or a message here to do with healing and how you can uh, uh, promote that healing. On the 28th we have our second planet going station retrograde, this time it's Neptune who's in the third house and we can work with Neptune in this position over the coming months and it's to bring about an awareness of how you communicate with others. You need to learn to be more compassionate and understanding and to listen more to, uh, to others. Then also we have uh, a fantastic 
uh, double aspect, uh, Jupiter squares the Sun and also makes a positive aspect of Venus. So this is great for working with others. This will give you great confidence and this will give you uh, uh, the ability to uh, get people on board. So it's a great time to work on a joint project or to uh, also make uh, changes within your relationships as, as the uh, Black Moon is in that seventh house. This could be positive changes that you could uh, bring in now. We finish the month with the new moon. The new moon's in Cancer and it's in your seventh house. Now the new moon in Cancer is about honouring our past and then moving away from it. Um, in the seventh house is about meeting the needs of yourself with the needs of others. But this is no ordinary new moon because it is a triple conjunction. It's also a conjunction between Sun, the Moon and the Black Moon Lilith. Now we spoke about the Black Moon earlier on and um, this is the time when uh, the Sun completes its cycle. Um, and there's a mini rebirth that occurs. This isn't a major rebirth like with Pluto, but it's still a rebirth. And it could be over the last year you've been working on things and now they will all come to fruition. But it's also the start of the new cycle, the new year, and the sun will shine a light on the Black Moon Earth and also on the moon. And we'll be able to see everything that there is, all the things that are good that you've done and also the things that need doing in the future. So this is the end of one cycle, starting of a new one, and it's time to uh, take a, a really good look so that you know what you've got to fix, you know what you've got to put right, and um, then you can spend the next year working on those things. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, June review. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. If you'd like to leave me a comment, I'll be glad to hear from you.